All right, in this video, we're going to talk about the Dark Horse trade options for three teams. The St. Louis Cardinals, the Atlanta Braves, and the New York Mets. Now, before we get into that, uh, please, of course, subscribe to the Baseball Hut 2. And let me know what you think about this video as we go along. So we're going to read some of this stuff. And the first rumor that Fansite has on here is completely ridiculous. They seem to be a little out of date. Uh, I'm going to read you. Who wrote this? It doesn't matter. No, his name is Mark Powell. Someone should tell Mark Powell. He's a little behind the times. He's kind of a year late with this one particular player. Especially with the New York Mets. MLB rumors. New York Mets should take a swing at Andrew Benintendi. Okay. With a weekend sweep of the Cleveland Guardians, this was written a day ago, New York Mets have won five straight games. Well, now they've lost two in a row to the Cubs, with which an impressive which an impressive feat for a team which got off to such a poor start to the season. Now, two games over the 500 mark, now they're back to 500. The Mets would be smart to add at the trade deadline if they are still in contention. The Mets will be. Uh, the kids from the farm have helped New York's depth immensely. Francisco Alvarez, Brett Beatty, and even Mark Vientos are all capable big, big leaders, big leaders. But beyond that, the Mets still have some holes to fill, especially in the outfield. Starlin Marte and Brandon Nimmo are solid. Now, he's not paid attention because Starlin Marte has gone off to a horrendous start. His, his OPS has been below 600. Mark Hanna is capable enough, and Jeff McNeil could fill in there when needed. But Marte was injured earlier this year. The Mets are one issue away from having one of the weaker outfield uni units in the National League. Why face that risk? While Andrew Benatendi is a known trade target for many contenders this summer, the Mets have yet to be connected to the veteran outfield. Benatendi can play any of the outfield spots, and he has postseason experience as recent as last season. With the Yankees. He's also played for the Red Sox for a long time, and he's got a World Series ring. Currently slashing 279, 339, 355 slugging percentage with very limited power in 45 games. Limited power? No power. He's got zero home runs. The struggling White Sox. Now, this is the part where the writer needs to do a better job in understanding who's available. Billy Epler can likely acquire the rental without giving up one of the Mets' top prospects, which should be the ultimate goal. I should mention to the writer, uh, not to be mean, but you got to do a better job of researching, Mark, because Ben Benintendi has a five-year contract with the White Sox that he signed this past offseason, and he's not available to be free agent until 2027, 2028. So why would the Mets give up any top prospects for this guy? For some, and, and here's the thing, the Mets do not sign veteran players to five-year contracts. Not somebody's in the 30s. And Ben Attendee, he's 29, 30 years old. Mets don't sign a veteran players to that length of contract. They did that with Stone and Marte. And you see what's happened in the second year, by the way. Um, as John Fr Frisella noted early in the year, Ben Attendee is a professional hitter. He'll fit in quite well with the Mets. Here's the thing. There's no power. Mets need power hitters. And the Mets have a leadoff hitter. And uh, Ben Attendee cannot lead off on this team. Brandon Nimmo's the leadoff hitter on this Mets team. Um, they don't need this guy. So this is not a very good uh, case for the Mets to, to make any kind of trade. And you wouldn't have to give up anything for him. He's not a rental. He's a four-year investment. Next up, the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cardinals can trade with a division rival. St. Louis Cardinals need pitching while they should also require a big fish like Dylan Cease or perhaps another ace on the market once July comes around. This team needs depth. Rich Hill could provide that. Trading in the same division is rare, but the Cards and Empires pulled off a deal just last season for pitcher Jose Quintana. While Pittsburgh is certainly closer to contending this year than last, their window probably won't open for another season or two. Hill, a veteran rental, was acquired for this very reason, to be sent packing at the trade deadline or prospect or two. Sure, Hill has done an admirable job in the Steel City, and the Bucks are a few games over 500, surprising us all. Yet, despite a 20 and 8 start, Pittsburgh has fallen back down to earth in a big way. Should this trend continue, the price will be clear sellers come late July. The Cardinals, meanwhile, has flipped the script as well. Disaster start has some pundits warning that the Cardinals would sell assets 
far before the trade deadline. Now the Cardinals got off to a horrific start. They were 10 and 20 and dead last. And now they're starting to go up in the standings because their pitching has calmed down a little bit. And uh, Nolan Arenado has begun to hit. Rather, the Cards can still be, be in position to make a postseason run if they acquire the right pieces. Pitching is definitely their need, is, is definitely their vital needed upgrade. Hill, also known as Dick Mountain, with his 3.80 ERA and 1.352 whip, can offer that to a veteran laden group. He he give you know he's not going to be hurt. I mean that's I mean Rich Hill pitched for the Mets back in 2019. He he'll take the mound. You know, and he throws like you know 70 miles an hour with his curveballs. Uh you know he's gonna he's gonna take the mound. You know he's gonna make every start. That's the one thing about it, but he's a fifth starter. Uh Hill will get moved. I mean you know, the Pirates, even if they are not out of it, they're 500 team, they will move him uh, to bring in a young player that they take over in the rotation for the for the Pirates. That's without a doubt. Lee, in this video, the Atlanta Braves. From Fansight, Braves trade for familiar face. Okay, who could that be? The Atlanta Braves' biggest need right now is pitching, and it's unlikely to change anytime soon. If we're discussing a Dark Horse edition, however... Why not Jock Peterson? Well, this thing about Jock Peterson, he plays for the Giants. He's on the injured list. So who knows how long he's going to be out for. And he's not a pitcher. So why would this article talk about Jock Peterson going to the Giants? I mean, going to from the Giants to the Braves. The man with the pearls himself is in the midst of a down season by his standards. Peterson made the All-Star game last year, but wasn't dealt by the San Francisco Giants. who thought they had a chance at the postseason. This year, though, that's not the case. San Fran is a good bet to sell off some rentals to refurbish their farm system. The Braves, meanwhile, could use some corner outfield help. Sam Hilliard, Marcelo Zuna, and Eddie Rosario are the prime contenders for those roster spots. Peterson, with his 21 World Series experience and big bat, could snatch a starting spot right away. As I wrote a month ago, reunion with Peterson makes more sense than you might think on the surface. Can he pitch? Peterson was an NL All-Star last season with 23 home runs. This year, he hasn't been the same as his batting average has dropped about 50 points thus far. That could all turn around by the trade deadline. But should his numbers continue to flop, Peterson will be an easy addition for Antelos and Topolos. Assuming Marcelo Zuna doesn't suddenly turn things around for good, the Braves will need that corner outfield upgrade. End quote. Atlanta ultimately passed on a piece of reunion last deadline instead of acquiring smaller pieces, which did not pay off. Peterson, a player familiar with what it takes to make a World Series run in this market, is an upgrade the Braves need. Now, it seems like the writer is really trying to stretch uh, the bounds of, of reality with some of these players. Um, why would the Mets want to make a trade for a guy that's got a five-year deal, when they didn't sign him in the offseason, he's got no power, and then see guys that can hit the ball out of the ballpark. Uh, and why would the White Sox expect to get any kind of like big um, prospects back in return? And then you have the the Giants, uh, Jock Peterson. He could have signed with the Braves in the offseason. Braves didn't bring him back. So why would they make a trade? Nobody nobody went after Peterson. Because Peterson got a qualifying offer from the Giants. And he took it. So he knew he wasn't going to make any money from any team. And he's had a bad year. So a lot of those teams are right. And the Giants are wrong for bringing him back. And then, of course, you have Rich Hill. Who's going to get moved? That might be the one guy that will be moved. He's always, He always gets moved at before the All-Star. After the All-Star break and before the trade deadline. Well, you let me know what you think about this video. Please subscribe to the Baseball Hut 2. Thank you. Have a good day. And